Well, let's start with one of the injections first. The first type of injection, I believe, that was performed was called an epidural injection. What is the purpose of an epidural injection, and does it have any diagnostic value? Well, it could have diagnostic and therapeutic value. Diagnostic value means that um, if an epidural injection, and that's an injection that's placed with the use of an x-ray in the small space between a disc and a nerve. So, for example, uh, an L2-3 epidural steroid injection would be a process where a patient would come into a kind of a surgery center setting. The patient would be sedated so they don't move. Um, X-ray is brought in and a needle, which is visualized on X-ray, is placed right between the disc at L2-3 and the nerve, and then a steroid medicine with a numbing medicine is placed. So that's an epidural injection. Uh, injection at L2-3. Now, if the healthcare provider who's recommending that injection suspects that the pain is coming from that level, then I would expect within the next 24 to 48 hours, if the pain was coming from that level, the patient should have uh, incredible relief of the symptoms. Um, and that's from that uh, quick-acting numbing part of that uh, two-pronged medicine, so to speak. The longer-acting steroid medicine can give therapeutic benefit. So sometimes if that's indeed where the pain is coming from, that steroid medicine kind of hangs around in that area. The patients can experience long-term therapeutic relief from the injection. So they can be diagnostic, if that's where the money is, so to speak, or therapeutic, providing long-term relief. So it, it can confirm or not confirm whether a certain level is really where the pain is coming from. Yes, in, in certain circumstances it can. And so, for example, the other type of injection that was performed are called the set blocks. How is that different than yeah. the epidural? Well, if you remember those uh, kind of front to back slices we were looking at, so the epidural injection, the epidural space is the space where the nerves live. And then I kind of pointed out on one of those slices those facets that were enlarged. So the facet joints are the small joints behind the nerves. So, similar to an epidural steroid injection, you can place a similar type of medicine inside the facet joints. Instead of the x-ray guiding the needle between the disc and the nerve, though, the x-ray is going to guide the needle into the facet joint, and then that's where the injection is administered. And the theory behind an injection there is that if the pain is coming from a facet joint, well, then you'd expect the injection in that facet joint to remedy the pain on a short-term basis. And again, that, that steroid medicine can sometimes give you some long-term therapeutic uh, benefit if that's indeed where the pain generator is. So when you say pain generator, if someone's saying they have neck pain or back pain and the doctor wants to localize and figure out exactly what is causing the pain, that's, that's what the pain generator would be, right? What's yes. causing the pain? Yes, when you're talking about... Uh, trying to find out where a patient's subjective complaints of pain are coming from. Yeah. So one injection would be to try to figure out, is the disc causing the pain? The other injection would try to figure out, is the joint causing the pain? Yes. All right. Were the injections that were performed with Mr. Richardson, did they have any diagnostic value? As I reviewed it, you couldn't make sense out of uh, the injections. You know, it seemed like nothing really helped his subjective complaints of pain whether he had epidural injections or consent injections. So they really don't add any any value as I, you know, Tuesday morning quarterback, uh, you know, reviewing the Monday night game, so to speak, as I review those injections and work backwards. So, Doctor, at the end of the day, you, you looked at all the records, you looked at all the films, you did an examination of Mr. Richardson, what were your final conclusions and opinions related yeah. to this incident? Yeah, I think it was an unfortunate incident that uh, he should receive uh, treatment, and the treatment that he should receive that was reasonable was, for sure, the transport to the uh, emergency room and the evaluation there, make sure there's no broken bones or any obvious uh, uh, objective uh, findings. So I, I believe that that's reasonable. And uh, you know, for... Um, Diagnoses such as contusions and sprain strains, um, it's reasonable to undergo conservative treatment. It takes about six to 12 weeks, a month and a half to three months for contusions 
and sprain strains to completely resolve. So six to 12 weeks of conservative treatment, whether it be physical therapy, um, medications, um, chiropractic treatment, that type of thing. That's reasonable conservative treatment. Now, since his pain did not resolve at six to 12 weeks, he continued to claim pain, then I believe that it's reasonable and secondary to this incident that he undergo the MRI scans of his spine. That should be related to this incident. Now, the MRIs show no objective evidence of trauma. They show nothing that would add to the post-incident diagnosis, only pre-existing changes. So then, in my opinion, treatment as related to the incident occurring in June of 2015 should cease at that time. Any other treatment, I'm not saying you should withhold all treatment if he's complaining of pain. I think as other healthcare providers are trying to make him better, but that's related to these pre-existing degenerative changes that were there before. And that's my opinion. 